Is it a gun that sucks balls? I'm the farting demon in this relationship. <laughs> I'd be an awesome rich person. You're both just an exactly. embarrassment. God, I'm awesome. Today. We're talking Tom Hanks and his vehicle. Yeah, I had my finger in my mouth waiting for you to finish. You gotta get four balls or something? Like dick piercing? <laughs> no, you know damn well I'm fucking that demon. It's real sexy. How could that be close and not be right? Yeah, I'll just kill some random dude. His wishes a blowjob. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Plotty Time, the podcast where we three gamers discuss video game stories in detail. Necessary and appropriate backlash. On one side of the table, we have Chomp Slap. You don't mix milk, chocolate, and peanuts on your own. You leave it to the pros and reap the benefits. On the other side of the table, Dr. Scientist. Newsflash, asshole. I've been hearing it the entire <laughs> goddamn time. <laughs> My name is Papa Scotch, and as I always say, take this quarter, go downtown, and have a rat gnaw that thing off your face. Good day to you, madam. <laughs> Welcome to Plotty Time. This week, a little bit of a correction crevice, more of a brain-clearing cloud crevice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you will, um, I had mentioned uh, we were talking about Hillary Swank. Oh yeah, at some yes. point in the episode, I forget exactly why now. Yes, the star of Million Dollar Baby. It was. Yes, that's what. We're... Was that what it is? It doesn't matter. But uh, I have no idea. <laughs> we mentioned uh, a movie, and I said, "Wasn't Hillary Swank in that movie?" Oh, you were talking about the Martian deep, movie, Deep Space, or Deep. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Whatever that was. The and I was core. I. Th- Yes, and I said Hillary Swank was in the core, and you're like, yeah, absolutely. And I'm like, wasn't she in another space movie? And in my brain, I got her confused with Jessica Chastain, who was in a movie, uh, Interstellar, where they were in space. And Jessica Ch- Chastain was also in space in The Martian. Neither was the movie I thought it was, Mission to Mars. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was Don Cheadle. <laughs> oh, those are so, so easily confused. Yeah, so a little bit of clearing up there. That's all we got for the correction. Wasn't grade, so. wasn't Hillary Swank? Hillary Swank was in a space thing called Away. Or is that? Did we talk about it because I saw that show? I think so. We talked about it because you saw that show. All right. And then I said, wasn't Hillary Swank? I, or I said I knew she was in the core, but I didn't. Wasn't she in some other space movie? And in my brain, that's where I went to Jessica. Yeah, you Chastain. thought of, you thought of Iron Man three with <laughs> Don Cheadle. All right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can see how it could go yeah, from one yeah. to the other, right? Like, it's an easy mistake Happens to make. to all of us. Yeah, so that's all we got for the correction crevice. So let's go ahead and hop into uh, what do we do this week? And we're going to start where we always start, Dr. Scientist. What are you playing, watching, doing? What's going on with you? Well, I watched the new WandaVision. Amazing. I knew this was coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come every week until the, the nine episodes are out. What number are they on now? Uh, five. Uh, I think you're almost there. I'm not doing it until they're all done. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, the last one's the first. Week I can't of March. encourage this behavior. I'm not going to do it. That's fair. Oh, but it's so good. I Boy, caught it for a month. I started watching season 14 of Supernatural. Uh oh. Because I had 14 and 15 to watch. I had a boy. I'm, st- I'm still stuck on nine. Now, yeah, well, I've seen nine a couple of times. Pfft, rookie. I know, right? <laughs> and of course, I watched some more Dragon Ball Super. You fucking yeah. dork. <laughs> How many episodes of Dragon Ball Super are there? 150 something, maybe. So, like, one eighth of Supernatural. Yeah. <laughs> but they're half hour long. So, it's, it goes it's like quicker. a breeze. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm halfway through the, the Future Trunk saga. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Where he fights Zamasu and Goku Black. Oh, yeah. It sounds really fucking cool. It is. It I is. Know. I like okay. Future Trunks. He is. He's pretty awesome. He's pretty tough. Oh, I thought you were talking about, like, swimming trunks. <laughs> Oh, no. idiot! <laughs> From the future, I'm re- I'm really like into the forward thinking of swimming trunks. I know, right? That's kind of what I do. I change every year. You guys are jealous. Uh, I also watched the movie House. H zero us three. Oh, nice! It was like recommended from Amazon. I was like, I think Chump Slap said something about this before. Oh yeah, they followed me on Twitter. Oh yeah! Shout out to House. <laughs> Shout out to House. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of slow to start, but it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a techie kind of thing. You give it a thumbs up? It's a techie slapper. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's definitely worth a watch. I would never recommend a movie to someone with a fine taste like you, <laughs> Scotch. But Of course. Of course. I, I can understand how it's difficult to you know, pinpoint my refined palate yeah. <laughs> of viewing pleasures. But uh, I mean, if it's if both of you guys watched it, I'll check it out. That's usually how it goes. You two watch it, then eventually I get to it. Yeah, perfect. And uh, that's all I've really watched this week. 
I mean, there's a lot of episodes of Supernatural and Dragon Ball Super. So it takes a lot of time. Yeah. That sure boy <laughs> does it. But I, I played this game called Valfaris. Valfaris. V A L F A R I S. Sounds indie. It is. <laughs> it's a shmup, like Contra Sh- style, kind of. Sure. Hard as balls, scro- side scrolling shooter thing. Nice. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I don't think I'm going to platinum it because there's a plat. I think one of the trophies is like die less than 10 times or something stupid like that, and there's no way I'm going to do that. It's fair. Okay. Okay. But it, it, it's a fun game, tough game. Hmm. I recommend it if you see it. And that's basically all I did. So, Papa Scotch, why don't you uh, throw some of your fine palate this way and yes. tell us what you saw. I'll just dump my fine palate all over you guys. How about that? I don't like the sound Six. of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of things that you guys got to before me, I introduced the girlfriend to review. Oh, we watched nice. a bunch of those. So good. Every time I watch it, it's better. <laughs> it's so good. What did she think of? Pancakes, divorce, and pancakes. <laughs> That's actually the one I started with. I was like, <laughs> you're either going to be on board or not after yeah. this one. And uh, she laughed her ass off. So we watched a bunch of them. I think the last one we watched, it was after the cult, after he burned down his two dad's houses. <laughs> well, his dad's <laughs> two houses. Yes, his dad's two different homes. Not his two dad's houses. That's a different thing. <laughs> his one, singular dad, <laughs> two physical addresses. He burned down after he, one after he started a cult, of course. <laughs> like the, the first one's hilarious though when he's reaching for the fire extinguisher. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> it's, that's great. And I just watched the one where his ex-wife moved back to L.A. with the professional baseball oh. player that he hooked her up with. <laughs> oh, it's so great. Just nothing works out for that guy <laughs> ever. Oh, you're so close to the conspiracy theory one too. <laughs> oh yeah, I think that's next or two away. But uh, that's it's a great show. If you guys haven't watched it, get out there and watch Review with Andrew Daly. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, also started Forrest watching... Forrest well, I, uh, I watched a movie, Logan Lucky. I don't know if you guys ever saw that one. A heist movie. I've, I've seen it. I think I've seen it. Love that movie. That's the one famous in it, right? That has Channing Tatum as the star. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. But there's a bunch of people in it. Katie Holmes is in it. Oh, uh, I said famous people. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Um... <laughs> Daniel Craig, he's James Bond. He's pretty famous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a famous one. He's got a southern accent playing a guy named Joe Bang, who's an explosives expert. Yeah, the southern accent threw me off. <laughs> it was really weird. I loved it, though. It was great. Uh, and then I also started watching Lovecraft Country. Oh, yeah, I've heard things about it. What's that on? It is on HBO. Oh, okay. And it is not what I thought it was going to be, mm. but it's pretty fucking wild. I'm only two episodes in, but I got to say. Wild like crazy or wild? Wild like, like crazy. Hmm. It slaps. I'll tell you that right now. I did not expect it. <laughs> I didn't expect it to have that much gore. Nice. I, it was it was wild. It's Lovecraft country. Yeah, I know. But it was like uh, basically this, this guy, he comes back from the war. Uh, it takes place in the 50s. So he was in Korea. And uh, he, he comes back from the war. His dad essentially got in a a silver car and went missing. Uh, his dad is played by, I forget the actor's name, but it's the guy who played uh, Omar in The Wire. Mm-hmm. Bobcat Goldthwait. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Bobcat Goldthwait is his dad. And uh, <laughs> so he goes looking for his father with his uncle and uh, one of their one of his childhood friends who just swung back into town and really had like nothing else to do or nowhere to go. So they hit the road driving from Chicago to Massachusetts to find him. And they end up uh, not being very welcome in a lot of places because it's the 50s Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're black. So there's hijinks. I shouldn't call racist. Wow. I shouldn't call it. I shouldn't call a classic. You got you definitely went full racist there. Tale of racial racial injustice hijinks. But uh, (laughs) yeah, I guess it's fictional, but it probably did happen to somebody. I don't know where the line is, but it's great. It's a great show. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Okay. They're monsters. Uh, and then for stuff I played, uh, guess, guess what? I finished the story in Cyberpunk 2077. Oh, mm. you made it all the way through. I made it all the way through. It was pretty good. I wasn't blown away by it. It's definitely not in any of my top video game lists. Mm. But I'm glad I played through the story. Mm. And it mostly worked. You do all the side missions? Mostly? Oh, no. I, I just beat the story story. 
And then I started looking back at uh, what it takes to platinum it, and I don't know. It's uh, you've done worse. Oh yeah, but it's it's. I'm talking like another hundred hours of investment to platinum this game. Hot damn! And do I really want to do that? I mean, if it was ten hours, sure. But a hundred, I have to like go back to old saves and make like very specific story decisions so that you can mm. save certain characters so they can have an effect on the story later. It's one of those. So I basically would have to like load an early save and go from there. Uh, and it's a whole thing, and I haven't really decided if I'm going to do it or not. Probably not. Probably not. I have a. I did get Assassin's Creed Valhalla. It's just sitting there. Yeah? You didn't even play the other Assassin's Creeds. You don't need to. I... Pl- no, I haven't played one in a while. I played... Not since Brotherhood. Wow. Yeah, you probably didn't miss much of the story. I played a little bit of... Which was four? Was four... The Sea Shanty Pirate one? Yeah. Okay, so I played a little bit of that, and I think I own, like, four Assassin's Creed games in there I've never played. (laughs) I know I own three. I know I own, uh, was Syndicate one of them? You know what? I'm just going to sit here and speculate like an asshole and get stuff wrong. So let's just go ahead. Let's move over to Chomp Slap. What have you been playing, watching, doing? What's going on with you, buddy? Well, I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Okay. And... Took me 30 minutes to figure out that you have to change the audio output on your PlayStation because the voices weren't coming through. I was getting annoyed. <laughs> nice. How? What What went wrong there? I don't know. It just, the game started and it was just subtitles. And I was like, well, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to hear these people's voices. Right. So I restarted, tried, checked all the settings, and then apparently there's a audio output setting that doesn't work right with it. And I don't know. Cool. PS5 is off to a great start. Yeah, it's pretty neat. So that got me off on a little bad taste in my mouth. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to play much of it. It's a lot like Odyssey or what, the one that was in Egypt or whatever. I don't get it. I don't get what the hell it has to do with Assassin's Creed. Like, you have no idea what it has to do with the Assassin's Creeds. We already discussed they kind of they kind of stopped doing things about assassin's creed and they're kind of just yeah it's like games now i remember when you couldn't stay in the animus that long and this one's just the whole games in the animus i don't know if you get out of it <laughs> is know. there like a story outside of the animus that's what i'm saying i haven't i didn't see oh one. you don't know yet. okay so you're just you're in the time period maybe you pop out of it later you have no idea yeah exactly and then there was, I saw there's something about building up your settlement, and I was like, oh, I'm not going to like this. Oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. uh, guess I'm not going to get the game. Why do they got to put that in every fucking game? I don't know. I'm totally for having a home base, and maybe, like Borderlands, like you have a home base, maybe you throw up some decorations if you want them. Yeah. Maybe you hang your guns if you feel like it, but you don't have to sit there and like pour hours into it. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to build up a fucking... Settlement. I just want to beat people up with double wielding axes and shit. Yeah, I can like go out back and build a shed if I wanted to. Like I, I can build stuff on my time. Yeah. Yeah, and if I wanted to, if I wanted to be around other people, I wouldn't be playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Fair, yeah. yeah. I'd be you playing us. Sims or something if yeah. I wanted to make a house. Yeah, if I wanted to talk to people, I'd be playing Sims. There you go. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. Well, they're not. It's eh. It's okay. Playing some more. Dudes, you know, you know how it is. Getting dudes, I got you. But I watched uh, watched some movies. You guys, mm-hmm. want, you guys want to hear about them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of let's attention. have it. All right. I watched this movie called Psycho Goreman. Psycho mm, is it about Gore-Man. a Psycho Goreman? Mm-hmm. Is it like a Gorman? Nope. Oh. It's about this crazy murdering alien dude that these two kids find. They find a jewel. That if you hold it, he has to obey every one of your commands and shit like that. So it's like a a new genie. <laughs> Is that crazy? Well, he doesn't well, grant so, wishes. He so just shacks in it. If you tell him not to kill you, he does. He's not going to kill you. But he's like, oh, once you get rid of that jewel, I'm going to fucking murder you. <laughs> but so he sticks hmm. in his butt. <laughs> I don't know. I fell asleep at the end, so I didn't see how it ended. But mm, it was great, kind of boring. But I don't know. I think it could have been so much better because it's practical effects and it's gory. It's pretty fun, but not 
really good. Mm. Mm. Sounds exciting. Well, I'm just throwing it out there. If you're looking at it and you're like, oh, no, don't even bother. Watch this movie called Hex. Okay. You guys see Hex. this one? H-E-X? Hex? H-E-X. Mm, it's possible. It's this uh, guy's on vacation. Some of his bros runs into a woman. They have a little fling going on. Blah, blah, blah. She's possessed by a spirit. <laughs> sure, sure. Standard story. And the, and the story is old as time. I don't know. It It's pretty fucked up, but let's just say the ending's a little bit, like, I don't know, difficult. You're like, what the fuck? And oh. And it's like a fucking usual suspects where it's like, uh huh, you should have seen this coming. Look at this. And you're no. like, oh, it's fucking stupid. So, no, no bueno? I don't know. I'd give it a go. It's still fun because you're like just watching this possession and these weird island doctors just trying to fix it. I don't know. Give it a go. I think it's on Netflix. Give it a go. That's the official recommendation. <laughs> you got it. Okay. I watched Malice in Wonderland. <laughs> Sounds cool. Mm. It's. I would rethink that. I mean, I I liked it until the end. <laughs> Again, I don't know why they had to throw this in there. It's like, oh, she was looking for her mom. Hoo hoo. Neat. Who cares? Mm, that sounds dumb. Yeah, but it was all just like this lady loses her memory, runs around underground of London or something, gets caught, <laughs> or something caught up with fucking. <laughs> Some seedy characters and shit like that. I don't know. If you're a fan of Danny D- Dwyer, watch it. But Danny Dwyer, huh? I think that's what his name was. What else has he done? Danny Dyer. I don't know. He's in a Rubber Bandit song. So it's... Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's everyone listens to the Rubber Bandits. Well, if you don't, you should. Mm, there you go. <laughs> but, I mean, it's okay. If, you, if you're like, oh, I love Alice in Wonderland. I really want something different. Check it out. But as for slappers, we got the slapper of the week. Slap. Blood car. Mm. Blood car. Mm. Ooh. All Which right. Way? This is easy. It's just a murderous car. It's like that supernatural episode. Or like Christine. Yeah. I think I've heard about this. Isn't it a car? Like oil is insanely expensive and the car runs on literal blood? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ah, that's not fair. I knew what that one was about. Yeah, it's about this guy who's a vegan, and he's trying to get this car to run on wheatgrass. And when he's... <laughs> 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 okay. So he's, he makes a little engine and keeps feeding it wheatgrass, and it just won't work. And he actually cuts himself. We get blood in there, and he's like, oh, my God. So then he builds, So this vegan puts well, he blood ends in. Up there's a scene where he's like running around trying to catch squirrels and shit. He's like crying the whole time, trying to shoot him with BB guns so he could throw him in his car. And then he starts throwing people in there, just puts this machine in his trunk that shreds them and feeds the say, car that way. He them in? He doesn't bleed them? Yeah. No. He's just like so opens the, the trunk, them. chucks them in. <laughs> so it's awesome. like a transformer. Oh, my God. It's It's something. And if you're into slap culture at all, you'll you'll appreciate it. Let me guess. 75 minutes. It is. I'd say 82. It's 82. <clears throat> Very close. Good try. Boom. <laughs> so it, does that have any relation to the TV show Blood Drive? I have you ever seen that? Know. That sounds familiar. I'll tell you, it's slappy as fuck. Is it like the same idea? Sort of, but imagine it's a mix between the cars that run on blood and like... Death Race 3000 and Cannonball Run. So they have to, like, they're trying to make it across the United States with blood cars. That's exactly what it is, yes. And then it it goes wildly off the rails and stops becoming about the race pretty quickly. Huh. No. It was, it was, that slaps. That, one of the slappiest things I've seen. I'll have to check that out. Blood Drive. Check right it out. on it. Blood Drive. All right. It's a slap of the week. Blood Drive. So how about we go ahead and we move into our uh, video game news slash stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this 
Okay. <laughs> this week we've got. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> we got four pieces of news. Uh, first one is really quick. A big deal in the baseball simulation world. Ooh. Oh. ML. Yeah. MLB the show is leaving PlayStation exclusivity and is coming to Xbox for MLB the show 21 on 420. Is that what? Plays it. Do people it. still still play sports games? Yeah, I play NHL, remember? Or Chell. Same yeah, thing. Some people mm. play Chell. Some people play FIFA. I got some Madden heads. It was worth mentioning because it's the first time since the, the MLB game. There were the MLB games and then it turned into MLB The Show. And those two combined have been going for 24 years. It's the first time in 25 years that they're going to be on a different console. Wow. I don't care. They just saw a big market open up, man. I guess so. No, PlayStation's probably like, you're not selling. Get off of here. <laughs> You're not selling enough bullshit <clears throat> fake packs yeah. and microtransactions. That's a uh, first piece of news. Second piece of news that recently came out. The details are very scarce, but EA has announced it's going to make a college football game again. I oh, saw that. Thank God. They're not going to steal players' likenesses this time. Yeah, they're just going to have the team licenses and then rando players thrown in there. And I guarantee you they're going to do the same thing they used to do with like the PS2 era games. They're just going to set up like a, a system where you can share rosters and some other people are going to go through and manually put in every player's likeness and number. Yeah. And then EA is going to be like, I don't, I didn't, we didn't do this. Yeah, probably. This is a roster that some random fan made. I mean, if you you're a fan download. of co- college football, why would you play it if they had have real people in it? That's a great question. Cause you're more a fan of the college. Oh, which is so sad, but <laughs> it's, oh, so it's coming sad. from a pit guy. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not out here. Giving them money, <laughs> donate to them. Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> Fair enough. I've been to one, two pit football games since I graduated. Sounds like two too many. Yeah, yeah, they were a lot of fun. They beat Virginia Tech the one time when Pitt sucked and Virginia Tech was trying to be national champions. It was great. When the anyway. fuck was Virginia Tech trying to be national champions? Well, they always think every season they're going to be national champions, <laughs> which is hilarious because they go like at best eight and four. Yeah, all right. But, uh, yeah, something. fuck Virginia Tech. I said it. Send your hate mail. Whoa, I dare you. Whoa. Yeah, I, I do not. There. I would guarantee we don't have a single fan who, who's a Virginia Tech fan. Speak for well, yourself. Well, we'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jump slap. Big Virginia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if they're out there, shoot us a message and just say, fuck you, chump slap, because he said it first. And uh, <laughs> the other piece of big news that just came out, Gearbox has been purchased <gasps> for $1.3 billion dollars. They have been bought by the Embracer Group, which is the same Swedish company that owns THQ Nordic and Coke Media. Coke Media? Coke Media. Like Coca Cola? No, K O C H, like the Coke Brothers. Uh, but I don't I think it's I don't think it's the Coke Brothers. I think it's something else. Interesting. Basically, Randy Pitchford says he's really on board. He's the head of Gearbox. Well, of course he is. He's gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna make a lot of money. They also this is the thing. Everyone's freaking out because they make borderlands and borderlands has been very successful but let's not forget that they also made aliens colonial marines and duke nukem forever they, they've got some stinkers mm-hmm. did they make anthem? stable no mm-hmm. that was ea no mm-hmm. no that's bioware right which was owned by ea which one did gearbox make that failed oh, oh um they just shut it to battleborn okay they tried <laughs> They, they made an effort, but now it's completely shut down. But uh, this is what always happens is the studio says, this is great. This is going to mean we have more resources and we have more money and we can make bigger games and better games. And then within, you know, they'll put out like two or three games and then the studio will just be absorbed and it'll be. Yeah, THQ Nordique. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll be THQ Nordique West or some bullshit. And then eventually it'll just lose everything that made it Gearbox. So. Cool. That's probably in like three years. That just, it happens. Yeah. Uh, the other big piece of news, Stadia <gasps> is shutting down its in-house developers. That is hilarious. Oh, my God. They, I don't think they released the game. Yeah. They are. Pl- they say they say that they're planning to release the ones that are near completions. They said like 70 or more percent completed. None. Because it's just at this point, they'd be throwing money away. <laughs> Pac-Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> Pac-Man 2, maybe. I don't know what I don't know you what they Stadia bought. could run that? <laughs> They said they're shutting down so that the uh, the team that are responsible can move on to new roles, and they said they're shutting down to support 
third party developers. So they're firing a bunch of people. <laughs> they're firing a lot of people. They said they're trying to work them into the rest of Google somewhere, but for the most part. They're shutting down so they can support third party. That's like me saying, I'm shutting down my football team because yeah, I want yeah. the other guys to have a chance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's a lot of bullshit. Um, some people believe that this is the end of Stadia. Or Are the you start not, you're not one of them? <laughs> I don't think it is. I don't know. Do you think you could stream react. Pac-Man 2? <laughs> I know we probably couldn't hear. That's not a real game. I think I can. I've tried it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said that the 999 Stadia Pro subscription service will continue to exist. Of course they will. Take your 10 bucks for nothing. <laughs> that Google in the future may try to secure exclusive or timed exclusive third-party titles, but any near-planned games will be released on Stadia and everything else is just going to go as it normally would. Mm, so may do something means they won't. They Probably not. might have some games that are almost 70% done. Yeah. Well, all the games that are over 70% done will finish, which is none. <laughs> and then we'll try and find these people jobs, which they won't have, and we'll fire them. Allegedly. I feel like we should have thrown an allegedly mm, in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think a Google CEO is listening to us. <laughs> we don't know that. He searches for Stadia every time. Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking joke. I can't believe you paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> I paid a lot for that. Thank you. <laughs> and continue to every month. Oh, that's great. You could throw me $10 and I'll supply you with <laughs> anyway. Stadia games. So, uh, that that's all I got for video game news slash stuff. What a joke. So how, so how about we get to the actual game that we're actually going to talk about this week? And what is that? Let us begin. We are talking about the sequel to one of the best games that has ever existed. Somehow was better than that. Space time horror action adventure vehicle. Dead Space 2. Better than that? You think it was better than the first one? Yeah, Fuck that yeah, blew I my do. mind. Wow. I don't think it's close. I don't think the story was better. We'll We're going to get it. into it. <laughs> it was released January 25th, 2011 for PlayStation oh 3, God. A- Xbox 360, PC, developed by Visceral Games and published by EA. It is a third-person action-adventure survival horror game written by Jeremy Bernstein. This is 10 years old? Bernie. I know, right? And it's 10 years after 9-11. Whoa. Coincidence? Yes. Probably. (laughs) Coincidences happen all the time. Not maybe, or it could be. Yes, it is a coincidence. (laughs) So uh, I picked it this week. Uh, If you want people out there, you can uh, go back, listen to our original episode. We did Dead Space. Jesus, when was that? Oh, I listened to it. Was that season one? Uh, Yeah, 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 it was. It was like episode 20-something. Oh, what wow. the fuck did we talk about in it? You might have been just getting your Stadia or something. <laughs> sweet, sweet. I oh. didn't regret that. I wanted to write down because I heard it and it made me laugh. I was like, <laughs> you definitely still were playing Division 2, of course. Yeah, well, I mean, come on. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> that was for the majority of this podcast. <laughs> uh, but I, I figured you can go back, you can listen to it. We'll be here. Uh, I will give you guys, listeners, a brief rundown of what happened in Dead Space 1. Mm-hmm. Kind of lead us into Dead Space 2. Uh, basically, and I'm, I'm flying through this. There's a lot more nuance and stuff like that, but I'm just trying to get to it as fast as possible. The year is 2508. The USG Ishimura, which is part of a mining operation on a planet called Aegis 7. Uh, there is something goes wrong. They send out a distress signal. And the USG Kellyan comes to respond to see what the heck is going on. Like aliens. And wackiness ensues. Yeah, it's actually, it is pretty much like aliens. But instead of planet, think a ship. Otherwise, you're the same thing. Mm-hmm. So they, uh, Isaac is part of a team. Isaac Clark, he's one of the engineers. Uh, all the tough guys with guns go in. Isaac turns the power back on. All the tough guys die. And Isaac's pretty much left alone other than a couple co- uh, co-workers. Uh, the whole ship gets overrun with these hostile monsters called necromorphs, which are the reanimated corpses of the crew. Mm-hmm. Now, the the whole story, the reason this happened is the Ishimura uncovered a man-made red marker on Aegis 7, which, mm-hmm. I mean, we'll get into the unitologist and that whole cult thing a little bit, but the point of it is, is it was made by an ancient alien race that causes that releases energy causing homicidal insanity and the spread of the necromorph infestation on whoever's pretty much near it. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, I did do a lot of research into the backstory in all of Dead Space, and I think in 3, they go back and retcon a bunch of stuff. Probably. I know when we uh, were doing the first podcast, we mentioned that Isaac is 50 years old, and this is like three years after that. He's 50? That Yeah, I, we had the same yeah. reaction. Yeah, that's exactly, because I remember reading that and being like, oh shit, he's 50. Well, it's in the but, future when they have better aging pills and such. Aging pills. <laughs> <laughs> better ones. <laughs> yeah, better ones. Perfect. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, I didn't even get through the fucking recap of the last game yet, guys. So uh, they, they found the marker. Isaac tried to return the marker to the planet and just get rid of it, but one of his co-workers, Kendra Daniels, betrayed him because she's a unitologist who is the cult that worships the marker and wants to basically bring about something called a convergence event. Mm -hmm. uh, she's trying to actually put the you know, the uh, marker on a ship and get it back to her unitologist bros. But uh, the big twist, the big thing that happens as you're fighting through it, trying to destroy it, doing whatever, is that uh, the entire time Isaac is being helped out by his girlfriend who's on the Ishimura who was the one who called for help. She's helping him out, leading him through areas, hooking him up, and it turns out that she was dead the entire time. These were all hallucinations brought about by the marker. He sends it back on the planet, destroys it, fucks off into space, and the last moment we get is of crazy zombie Nicole attacking him on the escape pod, and that's it. Fade to black. Cut to black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is Dead Space 1. Again, we did an episode on it. Go back, listen to it. I am really high on this new thing coming out called Stadia. And I'm sure it's going to be good. <laughs> uh, so now let's let's get into Dead Space 2. How about it? Yeah, let's mm. check it out. First, uh, do you remember playing that puzzle game that led into Dead Space 2? Uh, Extraction, maybe? Or is was that the rail shooters? No, 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 no. There was a rail shooter, but there was another one that was like a puzzle game where you had to move stuff around. Yes, it was kind of like hacking or yeah, stopping the yeah. virus somehow, and it was like mini games. Yeah, you play the guy who's the first guy you see, mm. and it leads right up to the beginning of Dead Space. Oh, Story. really? Yeah, interesting. Wait, Extraction is the shooter. Yeah, okay. Then the other, I don't remember what the other one was. I yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about though. It was like a a, a mini game type thing. Yeah. It was like comic book style, too. Yeah, there wasn't a lot to it. No. Just to keep you wanting but, more. But it, it was funny because you played that game and you're like getting into the character. You're like, oh, this character is pretty cool. And then Dead Space 2 comes and the beginning scene happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dead Space, uh, their last game and the last piece of property, this only ran from like 2008 to 2013 I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, there there were novels. There were direct-to-video like movies, yeah, I remember uh, seeing the Dead movie. Space Downfall and Aftermath. There was an extended comic book universe, and I remember the guy who did the art was the same guy who did uh, 30 Days a Night, no, I thought the Garfield. graphic novel. <laughs> so, I mean, it was like they put a lot of money planning all kinds of stuff into this, and it just, the third game came out, people got mad because there were fucking microtransactions and a play-to-win scheme. And they just never made another one. Smart. <laughs> I finally found, go out on a high note, right? Um, the game we're talking about, scientists, Dead Space Ignition. That's it. Uh, yeah, 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 I couldn't remember the name either. But uh, yeah, like this was a huge property that just is straight up abandoned. That no one. It's which is shocking to me. Anyway, let's let's dive into Dead Space Two, and we can talk about all our fun sequel ideas at the end. All right. <laughs> Or keep to ourselves. Maybe, you know, run with it ourselves. Yeah. We, got, we, still got, we keep putting gold out there, you know? Hmm. I'll be surprised if anyone listens and does something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Prove, uh, prove chump slap wrong, people. Get out there and do something. <laughs> mm, it's a pandemic, though. <laughs> well, you're right. I don't know. Fucking sort yourselves out, people. So <laughs> <laughs> we begin with a, I have just written in my notes, a bunch of mind fuck shit. Eh, it's kind of like, isn't it like a, flashback of like a psychological interview or something yeah it's like uh it's an interrogation slash uh i don't uh consultation yeah something like that therapy session mm, definitely a like psychiatrist that. talking yeah right? you're definitely in a straitjacket too right and uh it's basically as you're getting asked questions 
Uh, you're playing again as Isaac Clark. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, he, he just keeps, and you keep seeing like creepy Nicole on the table with that, the Oculus style. Remember Oculus, the the glow in the dark, the glowing eyes, mm. and the mouth, which is creepy as hell. And she's like on the table. I don't want to say writhing, but she's very intimidating. Like she's gonna pounce anyway. Isaac blacks out. Uh, big difference in this game versus the first game. In the first game, Isaac was a silent protagonist. In this game, mm. he talks yeah. and has a personality. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there's a lot of action. There's a lot of stuff going on. So I'm, I'm trying to summarize it the best I can. But the setting of this game is a place called The Sprawl, which is a base on Titan, one of Jupiter's moons, right? Saturn. Damn it, really? I don't know. I just wanted to <laughs> okay. do a Uranus. Basically, this whole... Uh, base setting area is to study people or st- like people who have come in contact with the marker. That's what we get from it in the beginning, because there's a lot of different patients that are losing their minds because of this marker thing. Mm-hmm. It's like a psych ward. Yeah. It's the, it's the largest move of Saturn, by the way. Okay. That's right. I said Jupiter. You're right. Correct. Scientist. Good job. I know. So I know. Is that what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I had to Google it, but I know. Yeah, I know. I'm correct. I'm great. Well, anyway. I, yeah. <laughs> I had to get so uh, the game starts out with Isaac getting awoken by a guy by the name of Franco. I don't Star know why ignition. I remembered his name. Mm-hmm. Is it Star of Ignition? Yeah. That's him? Oh, man. <laughs> that's such a bummer because he is killed immediately. I'm pretty sure that's him, yeah. And I, I thought it was weird because he gets stabbed by a necromorph. He's, like, dying, and then he, he quickly turns in from dying to turning into a necromorph. Yeah. yeah. But I thought in the first game you needed those, like, manta ray flying-looking ones. No, well, this is a manta ray flying one that stabs him, isn't it? I don't know. I think it was just a huge claw, but I could be wrong. I thought it was the manta ray thing. Anyway, he turns into a necromorph immediately. You got to push him. You're in a straight jacket, and you're just... This first section of the game, you're just running. You're literally running away. In a straight jacket. In a straight jacket. You have no weapons, nothing. You just get to an area. You cl- A cl- door closes behind you. Uh, there's a there's a bunch of clips. There's a bunch of things going on here, but the important thing is they fill you in where you are, where you're at, what's going on. You get yourself patched up with a med kit. You get yourself a plasma cutter. You're ready to get yourself out of there. I love when he gets the plasma cutter. It's like a guy. He's like, hey, get me out of here. Yeah. He's like, is that a plasma cutter? <laughs> I thought the plasma cutter was always like a mining tool. Yeah. The, in this, they made it look like it was, I, I guess, like a s- medical or surgery type. Mm-hmm. Which I guess if it's a cutter, that makes sense, right? And how does the guy I'll get stuck it. there? I don't, whatever. He's like yeah. tied to a fucking table. Yeah. It's like they were doing like non unnecessary surgery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love the hacking in this game too. You're just ripping wires out. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's an engineer. He knows which wires to rip out. Yeah, he knows <laughs> what he's doing. That's the other thing I don't understand about this game is that the power's off. You reach your goddamn hand in there. You rip a bunch of wires out. Now the power's back. Why is the power fixed by removing pieces of it? Like, if you have a broken camera, you don't open it up and go, let's take some shit out of here. Fix this up. Uh, It's the future, man. Yeah. Makes sense to me. (laughs) Okay. We're just not going to indulge me. That's fine. (laughs) Those wires were holding the power back. Yeah. Well, were they? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So, uh, anyway, you get... You get a call from, what is, is there a term for this type of person that's like, because we've seen it in a billion video games of like a person on the radio helping you out, telling you where to go, uh, verbally escorting you to areas. It probably is. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but. Well, it's that situation. And your first one in this case is Dana Le Guin. Is that her full name? I think. I just saw Dana. I just saw Dana. I don't know. Dana. Dana. So she calls, and she has some really important information for you. She says, hey, you're Isaac Clark. And you're like, yeah, I know that. She's like, great. So you're not lost. Um, You have dementia, though. And you've been asleep for three years. This thing in your brain will kill you, but I can save you. Yeah, the marker infected your head. Mm -hmm. It planted something in there. You're losing your mind, which the entire time you're running and getting through this area, you see people who are infected literally losing their mind. Mm-hmm. And murdering themselves or others. So Isaac's not like, you made that up. He's like, okay, yeah, I could see where that's going to happen real quick. And uh, basically, you this is where you start the first dash, which is off to find Dana. Uh, on the way, 
uh, you, you know, you're you're going through, you're fighting, you're getting through areas. Eventually, you get some armor back, your spacesuit, and uh, you meet a guy by the name of Nolan Strauss, who recognizes you, and he's another patient that's in the same ward he as seems you. Stable. Yeah, he's like, hey, I'm patient five. Remember me, dude? I don't know if he was on the Ishimura or if he was in another place where a marker came, but he's definitely losing his mind in a similar situation to you. Yeah. So as you continue on, uh, y- y- you're seeing things. You're seeing some zombie Nicole, zombie ghost Nicole in the elevator. Remember? Your ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Hot. Ex because she's dead. <laughs> not because not you broke up. <laughs> That'd be a different game. Uh, and you're fighting a whole bunch of shit. Anyway, you keep going. You cleared through the hospital. You're finally out of the hospital. You take down your first boss fight. And uh, this is where Dana drops more bombs for you, saying that the marker's implanted in your brain. You can't just, like, bury this. It needs to come out, essentially. Yeah. Uh, and you need to get to her to remo- get it removed, and she's like, the only way to go is the tram station, so you got to head to the tram station. Classic tram stations. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Love them. I did love the moment when you get to the the platform or wherever, and uh, you just see the tram fly by on fire with people screaming. (laughs) Really is out of place. Yeah. (laughs) Just in case you weren't aware that this whole station's in a lot of trouble. But uh, you keep you keep moving. Uh, Nolan, like he he sees you from afar. He kind of helps you out. We're kind of building a little bit of trust here, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're supposed to believe he's not a bad dude. Uh, and Deanna keeps talking to you on the radio. Uh, she does give Dana. you more information. Dana, sorry. And uh, my autocorrect did not work properly because I think she spells it with an I, which is strange. I don't mm-hmm. think she does. I think she does. D A I N. But uh, anyway, Dana, she tells you that uh, Isaac's like, What's the deal? How is this happening? There's not a marker here. And she's like, Yeah, there is. And he's like, I destroyed the marker. She's like, You destroyed a marker. Yeah, we built one here. These are things that are the apparently the one in the original game was man-made, which is it goes way back in in the Destiny extended universe through all these games and other things that happen here. But we're not going to get into that. It's too crazy. Mm-hmm. Maybe in three. Did you say Destiny? I think you did, did I? but I was just going to let it go. Shit. Oh, man, I was confused. <laughs> I was like, like, Destiny had to do with Dead Space? Oh, yeah, same game. Oh. Sorry, the Dead Space lore. Right. My mistake. I'm... I regret that error. <laughs> it's okay. I don't want people to think Destiny's interesting. So <laughs> uh, you Burn. get a call or you hear about a guy. Well, you hear from Dana that the local director, Hans Tideman, wanted to use it as an energy. He wanted to use the marker as an energy source. Mm. And uh, I don't know if he was a, a unitologist or was he? Mm, no. I don't think he is. I think he hates He's them. like military. Yeah. Apparently, this is like a reoccurring theme is that people want to use it as an energy source, but it never works out. I, I think that's just an excuse the unitologists use to like get yeah, it there. Makes sense. Fucking unitologists, man. Yeah. yeah. There, it's the unitologists. Uh, we mentioned them a couple times. We, we go into them a lot more detail in the first one, but they're essentially space Scientologists who worship. Exactly. That's that's about as in depth as we get. <laughs> I mean, that's it's what it is, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. their. They worship the marker, they believe. That the marker can quote unquote make them whole, and they want to serve the marker into creating what's called a convergence event. And these people, they don't really exactly know what that is or what that means, but it's an important part of their religion. Do we ever find out what a convergence event is? I we believe, do. I believe one happens in this game. Eventually, Isaac gets his ass to the tram station. He, uh, we get introduced to his rocket boots. I don't remember if he had those. He had like the gravity boots where yeah. he could like expel some air and push off and fly through space. But in this, he has like rockets he can fly around with. Pretty sweet. But it comes into play in a lot of puzzles later. But he eventually gets this crazy action tram sequence, crashes into the ground, and uh, it turns out he's in a residential space, just some random other area. Uh, Dana's like, How the hell did you get there? Uh, whatever. Just, just get to. The Cassini Towers. That's where we're at. You're pretty close. Get yourself there. So uh, Nolan calls again, and he's 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 not there. He's his mind is going. There's something going on. Oh yeah. Do you remember stuff? Yeah. He's, he said, "Come on, man. You gotta remember." Yeah. He's starting to say the memories are coming back to him. He's like, "Are they coming back to you?" I'm seeing things. 
uh, and then like cuts off and leaves. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised he's has the wherewithal to be able to actually operate the messaging system. It might be automatic. Maybe. But uh, anyway, Dana calls, says, hey, Isaac, you're very important to us, so you got to get here. And he's like, hey, what's the, uh, what's the deal with this Nolan guy? And she's like, don't trust him. He, he murdered his wife and child. He's crazy, man. So he, th- Isaac's like, oh, shit. Okay, well. I'll, I'll believe whatever you say. Yeah. Right? He seems harmless. You seem like you have your shit together. And you told me there's a brain dementia worm in my head. I got to get out. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna believe you. Perfect. So Dana, she keeps leading you through the area, and she leads you into the actual Church of Unitology on the space station. And even Isaac's like, what are we doing here? Why? Why would you leave me here? And she said, it's the only place the space station can't monitor. Yep. Separation of church and state and all. Exactly. So there's a lot of markers he sees, a lot of creepy Nicole visions. But he reaches the top. Mm-hmm. Runs into Dana, mm-hmm. but but what happens? What happened there, Chumpslat? Uh, Tideman fucking starts shooting the place up, man. Yeah, turns out she's actually a unitologist. Mm-hmm. Didn't see that coming. Oh yeah, and then she tells you that, <laughs> dude. You help build the markers, man. Because the plans are in your head, bro. Oh fuck! That's what making you crazy. Yeah. So they need to get whatever's in his gorgeous brain goo, and to get it out. <laughs> In order to create the convergence event. Right. They get shot up. They all get sucked into space. There's no more Dana. Her and her bros are, are just floating around in the sprawl. So, thank God. She was annoying. Yeah, she was. She, But I love how they set her up as this is the big helper that's going to assist you. And it's like, oh, she's dead now. Before the end of Act 1. Yeah. Well, I mean, they did the exact same thing in Dead Space 1. Oh. They did, but that reveal was way later. Because Kendra helped you, but she, she did... Double tr- double cross you, obviously. But that was like the end of the story, wasn't it? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, but still, I mean. Was, but yes, yeah, yeah you're you right. Yeah, you think you'd know better by now. Yeah. You always trust the tra- crazy guy. Fucking Isaac. You know, Isaac, uh, he escapes because he has a spacesuit on. He fights through the gunship, fights a giant necromorph. Uh, and eventually he just gets thrown back inside into the Church of Unitology. Does a nice, cool superhero landing. Mm-hmm. A really important call comes from Nolan Strauss. And Isaac's basically like, why bother? Like, why should we even try? And Nolan's like, hey, we still have a shot here. The marker's in the government sector. If we destroy it, you know, we can stop the spread of this. And uh, But he's saying, like, time, time's running out. It, we built it. We can tear it down. Yep. That's the important thing he gets out. So now you're like, okay, we need Strassi here to help me because he knows things. I know things. Together we know a lot of things. It's a great way to put it. <laughs> Te- teaming up, we are more effective. Mm. So uh, Isaac continues on, and he runs into our next character, Ellie, who is behind a gate, and she is a basically a government ex-military, or possibly current military pilot. Mm. I wasn't clear on that. I don't know what she was doing. Yeah, and whatever she, is, can fly. she says, don't follow me. Yeah, she's like, don't follow me. Here, open the door. Go. Yeah, she's like, sorry, I just had to kill a bunch of my friends, and I saw a bunch of people killing other people, and I don't trust you, so I don't know. Good luck out there, buddy. Don't follow me. Interesting way to hide a loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, this is where I was talking about the moment. I, they didn't show much of it in the video, but there's a whole sequence where Isaac goes through the school and the nursery. Mm. That was an awesome part of the it game. It was an awesome part of the game. Right? They had the creepy kid necromorphs, and there was a great moment where Isaac sees through a, a piece, like a you know, a big window, piece of glass. Window stop heroes. But uh, he that. sees a woman playing with one of those little ball necromorphs with the the tentacles that come out. Yeah. And she's like, oh, it's so good. Come here, buddy. Oh, come over here. Oh, I love you. And then... The next thing we see is just an explosion and blood covers the entire glass piece in front <laughs> nice. of you. So that was pretty gnarly. Uh, you see a bunch of zombie face to Cole in this area, too. Uh, she's not very helpful. She's just there to scare you, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is where, finally, Isaac turns a corner and he says, you're not real. Like, get away from me. You're not real. Like, I know this thing messes with my brain, and you're not there. Fuck off. Yeah, I mean, that's what happened in the first one. You kept seeing her. So, I mean, how does this not... Yeah, I mean, come on. He's like, this shit again? Keeps moving on. 
And he gets to a main area, the transport hub, finding Ellie and Nolan, who she found Nolan running around, so they're kind of just together. Yeah, she's like, I don't want you to fucking join up with me, but I'll join up with this fucking crazy dude. Who's clearly insane. <laughs> Doesn't Isaac, like, talk her in? Like, you, can you watch him for me? <laughs> I don't know. She's, like, yeah. standing there with him, like... Is yeah, this, there's a moment where she's like, I found this other guy who says he knows you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. And Isaac's like, ugh, yeah, can you just keep him alive? He might know how to stop this. And uh, basically, while we're in this area, Tideman calls from mm-hmm. the other area, the other government section, saying, uh, yeah, that area has uh, losses, and you're not getting in here, and the necromorphs aren't getting in here, so good luck, and he... Shuts down the power, leaving you and whomever else is in that area to die. Nice. That's the way to go. Yeah, man. You got to save yourself, bro. Uh, Now we start a whole... There's a whole lot of sequences of action and doing stuff to get to this government sector, but I'm just going to blow through most of this. I just want to say you have to fix an elevator. Mm. Yeah, you also have to turn on a generator. Mm -hmm. There's so much restoring power and turning (laughs) on things and moving the solar panels. Basically, you do some engineer shit, right? Yeah. And you restore the power. And I I have even in my notes to summarize this next sequence uh, really quick is a lot happens, but it really doesn't because the story or anything like, yeah, a lot of gameplay, a lot of puzzle solving, a lot of shooting, which is great when you're playing it. But for the story, basically, the point is you need to get to the uh, the government area, the government sector, the government area, the government town. (laughs) You the big things you do is you realign the solar array. So you can get solar power and turn on the power, and it's a great sequence outside. That was a lot of fun, and you you do that. You turn on the power. You get on like a, a an on rail transport, kind of like a monorail mm-hmm. type thing, and you're going over to the government sector. And this is where on the way there, Tideman's like, "Hey, can't have this." So he snaps the track with the beam from the solar array. Yep. You're, uh, and then uh, Ellie and Nolan are stay there. They're pretty much screwed, and you have to go out and, and fix it. But uh, this is also the moment where, as they're going on the track, they see the Ishimura outside. <gasps> oh, my God. This brawl. So the ship wasn't destroyed. It wasn't blown up. They brought it back. And then Ellie tells you, it was a terrorist attack on the Ishimura. <laughs> it wasn't terrorists. <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, no, it's not. She's like, how do you know? Like, this is what everybody says. It's like, I was fucking there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty great stuff. So, basically, he gets them to, uh, he gets their thing to basically crash land into the government sector. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to put it. And he shoots himself over in a transport and gets over there. So, now they're they're in the government sector. Actually, they, I believe this is the sequence where they're in that area, but they have to go through the Ishimura. Well, he has to go through the Ishimura to fix the rails. So they can gotcha. bank crash I, I was, into it. Yeah. I was a little confused about the setting of this. I know it was a lot more clear when you played it. Yeah, you have to like use the gravity gun on the Ishimura to fix the rails so they can go over. Or and something. Tideman calls. He's like, you're using the gravity gun to get a terrorist place apart. It was pretty great. Was I, I, I liked it how it was a little nod to the first one. And you went to some of the similar similar, similar areas from the first game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. not the exact. Nice. It was nice. So... Eventually, you get through all that shit. You turn on the power, and you reach the government sector. And one of the first things Nolan does is he thinks it's a great idea to stab out Ellie's eyeball. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. With a screwdriver. Yeah. Yeah. And Ellie is mad. Well, yeah. <laughs> I love how she says to I, like, you, you owe me a fucking eyeball. <laughs> and then the, <laughs> like and how, then the thing like how, closes. How does he do it? Because, I mean, she's like military, and he's just a crazy dude. Do you think she'd be able to handle it? Do you I sneak up and stab her in the eye? No, because they were fighting and screaming on the phone calls a couple times, and then I don't know. She handles it pretty well, though. He might be military yeah. too. They don't really go into his mm, background. I don't think he is. He is insane. That we do know. That's true. He's losing his shit. He he also keeps talking about something called step three. There's steps. Yep. Step system that only he and Isaac know about. But anyway, uh, I, no one thinks it's a good idea to run off into the mines. Perfect. And then the next thing that happens in the video is. You turn a corner. Nolan's right there. He tries to stab you in the eye and take your eye, but you murder him with a screwdriver. His Inside very him. own screwdriver. Yeah. And uh, I liked in the video I watched that uh, he uh, he picked up the body with the stasis gun. Yeah. <laughs> I was like walking around with Nolan's body. That was pretty fun. But uh, 
This is an important part too, where Isaac runs into Ghosticle. Well, it's and... not really a ghost. <laughs> I put I used several terms. I called her Ghosticle, Zombie Nicole, uh, hallucination, apparition Nicole. Nicole. I use hallucination. She's a hallucination Nicole. I guess is the best way to put it. Marker generated hallucination Nicole. Perfect. So nailed it. There's uh this moment where Isaac basically accepts that Nicole's gone because he says something along the lines of like, if I didn't acknowledge you were gone, you were still here with me. And he's like, you're gone. Like you're dead. And then that, this is an important part because apparition, Nicole turns into just regular Nicole. Yeah. She's like, Oh, that was step four. Good for acceptance. you. Yeah. She's like, this is step four. This is acceptance. And, uh, she no longer has the lights in her eyes. She's just normal, normal Nicole. Uh, and she comes up and actually assists you as the game goes on. Mm-hmm. So uh, you keep going. Run into Ellie. And uh, Isaac kind of does this moment that uh, it was okay, but it, it makes a bigger impact than the story where he puts it together that Strauss was essentially running from his guilt. And that's why he was never really at peace with himself and why he was all manic, which yeah. whatever. So He's the like, steps were uh, dabbed up. Well, dabbed yeah, up. if you want to say it that way. <laughs> But eventually, he basically says Isaac's not running from his guilt anymore. Because we did find, and uh, it kind of turned the story on its on its side, because the first thing we see in this game is a call between Isaac and Nicole mm. uh, before all the shit goes down. And that's where Is- where Nicole says, thank you for like pushing me to go and do this. Yeah, your video from the first game. So he takes, he's been beating himself up because he blames himself for what happened. Yeah, for sending her... Onto the Ishimura, but which I guess I mean, dude, it was three years ago. I don't yeah. get over it, man. <laughs> and then there's some there's some wacky mini drill. Not it's not a mini drill. It's like a it's huge, a yeah, it's a huge <laughs> drill. Jeez, like three stories tall. I remember this fight being annoying too. I remember like playing this then the first time, not having any ammo, and I just had to basically stop things. Nice, yeah, because you get to ride on top of it and fight. You get to kill shit, yeah. Which is a lot of fun to play. Really is. But uh, eventually, you just ride that bitch right into the Earth Gov base. Boom! Right in the government sector. And uh, this is a very interesting part because Ellie says, "I found a gunship. We can get the fuck out of here." Yeah. And no, you can get out of here. Exactly. Because what does he does? Do- what does he do, Doctor Scientist? What does who do? Isaac. Oh well, he tricks her to go on a ship and then sends her off without him. That's exactly right. Saying something along the lines of, I couldn't rescue Nicole, I couldn't rescue these people, but I can rescue you. And then sends she fucks off into space. Just not both your eyes. Yeah. And she's like, I ain't leaving until I get another fucking eye, dude. <laughs> no! <laughs> and then next, there was a, a really cool sequence where Isaac sends her off and he just fucking sits down. Because this game has been a nonstop white knuckle thrill ride. Mm-hmm. Sure was. <laughs> so he sits down and then this is where Nicole shows up mm-hmm. and and she's like look Isaac just touch me just touch me. take my hand make us whole and he's like no I'm not ready to do that yet so then he gets up and continues on oh man it's so fucking brave of him because what does he have to do he's got to stop the marker the marker dude yeah. only he can do it since he built it I do want to talk about it in my Final thoughts. But so he continues on. Tideman calls him, says, hey, uh, I see you're in the base. Not cool, bro. Uh, <laughs> but it's fine because you're not going to get far. And uh, I love this moment where he's like, Isaac's walking down a highway, a highway, a hallway. All the lights turn on. It's the Earth Gov people. And they're like, drop your tools and put your hands up because he hasn't been using guns. He's just had fucking mining tools yeah. or engineer tools. So, like, drop your tools, put your hands up, you run away. All those guys eventually die from necromorphs anyway, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, don't you let them in? You, like, open the door? Like, Yeah, because Tideman blames Isaac for letting him in. Yeah. He's like, you did this, you killed everyone, and Isaac's basically like, hey, we, we got to get rid of this marker or no one's going home. Go, yeah. And if you would have let me in, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't have let everyone in. But he, he alludes to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he arrives at the, Isaac arrives at the marker chamber, Talking to Nicole, and he can he can see for, down below at the base of the marker. There's a whole bunch of necromorphs converging on the marker. <gasps> you know, like a convergence, convergence event. event. 
Oh my god, that's what it means. And then Tidman keeps saying this wasn't supposed to happen. The reason this is happening is because it's your fault and you let them in. Uh, we were so close to understanding it and then yep. explosion of something. And then you have to literally get a needle in your eye. I remember this playing it the first time. It's not a fun part of the game. <laughs> no, it's first of all, it's an insta kill moment. So if you miss, you're going into yeah, like it's that's the game. First over. time I had no idea what I was doing. Like, what, what are you supposed to do here? Oh, you have to like line up your eye. Yeah. Oh, I was wondering why. I thought it was a cutscene, and I didn't do anything, and yeah. it killed me. <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck am I supposed to do?" And uh, I do remember if you were going for the platinum trophy, you had to beat it on the most the most difficult, the hardest Which difficulty. Is like in- permadeath it's it's not permadeath well, well it is permadeath but you're allowed to only save the game three times oh uh, so it's the hardest difficulty only three saves and i remember one of the save spots being right here because it was an insta kill spot <laughs> and I, I i do remember too the first time i played it like i'm like what is happening because it was like you said it's just like a cutscene leads right into it and you're like you're just looking at isaac's face with a little laser and they're like, what am I supposed to do? And I start moving the controller and I see the needle move and put the laser over my eye. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and then they, so the game makes you jam a needle into your own iris. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you, I don't remember why you were doing this. Wasn't it to get the, the information about the marker I don't out? know. Nicole tells you you have to do it. She's like, this is the only way to do it. It it activates the brain codes. Yeah, so there you go. Perfect. That's what they they say. The machine activates the brain codes, and that's why I have to do it. Which, and you got to put a needle in your eye to yeah. do it. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, they're in your brain. You got to get in there, and get them out. I'd rather stick it through the side of my face. Right. Oh, that's right. Didn't they say that uh, the marker implanted it on your brain with the instructions of how to build it? Yeah, yeah. they had to activate it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, anyway, you you work your way down to the actual chamber where the marker is. And then Tideman pops out, barely alive, tries to attack you, and you you put a long uh, harpoon, I guess, yeah. directly mm. through his face. Pretty good. It was pretty anticlimactic for Tideman. I know, you get hit like twice. I thought it was going to be a wild boss fight, and then the boss fight comes after this. Yes. But this is the end game section. You're in some, I don't know how to put this, the, the marker world? Some kind of... Nether realm? You get absorbed by the marker, so I assume you're in the marker. I just assume yeah. it's some kind of mental thing, but whatever. It, doesn't really it could matter. be a mental thing, and uh, Ghosticle is there again, trying to make you whole, says something about how destroying the marker isn't possible, and you have a whole bunch of enemies, and it's foggy, it looks like a dust storm, and you kill a bunch of things, and then you unleash what is symbolically, I guess, the heart of the monster. It looks like a beating heart. Yeah. And then you kill it, and stop the convergence event. Oh, I do have my notes here. I think this was all in your head, but uh, yeah, because then you just come to outside of it, like yeah, and the marker starts crumbling. You did it. Uh, the place is starting to fall apart, and uh, credits. I love how this moment the credits so, start to roll. So before you do the credits, what happens at the convergence event? Like what is what is supposed to happen? Event? Like you say, all the guys converge there, but what does it do? It absorbs all their life. To what end? We'll never know because they didn't finish. I don't think we find out in this game. I think it brings you to heaven if you listen to unitologists. Mm -hmm. I think you're making shit up. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, I'm trying to find out what it is now because now I want to know. Well, if it's not until the next game, then we don't know. But you you promised me that you would tell me what the convergence event was. Yeah, everybody converges. I'll figure it out while you guys are doing your And uh, Nicole says... Only tell us if it's not in part three. Nicole's like, well, the creator of the... Marker has to be absorbed into the marker, and that yeah, will help it with the explain the end game. That helps with the convergence event. What do you What do you need to know? Convergence is a process triggered by a marker when a large enough amount of organic matter became infected with the necromorph pathogen. Mm-hmm. The marker would pull all the infected tissue into the stratosphere, where a brethren brethren moon formed and absorbed the marker that created it, along with the organic tissue of the creators of the marker. So, it, so what happens? In it three? creates a planet out of flesh the chunks of nearby planets and asteroids are caught and collected in its gravitational pull as the moon grows larger and larger it's what happens in three okay yeah once the moon is complete 
The creators of the marker must be killed and absorbed into the sentient moon, possibly in order to give it the sentience needed to guide its feeding on organic life throughout the galaxy. Oh, so it just becomes a moon. It becomes a different life form. It becomes like a, a death star for life. So like a marker is an egg. Yeah, pretty much. That's a good way to look at it. Because it's bla- in in three. I think in three they go into this more. It might be more in the movies. But the markers, like they're everywhere. They're like they were blasted out into the galaxy. Okay. As like seeds. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like uh, Prometheus. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't even. I don't <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> they both did take place in space. You are <laughs> there you go. But uh, so the credits roll. Mm-hmm. And I love this moment where the credits are rolling. You think the game's over. You're like, that's it. What a ride. But no, Ellie reaches out over the comms. Uh, this crazy pilot is coming in there to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you put that. And this is where I found out his name was Tideman because I couldn't hear it right. I the couldn't whole hear time. it. I thought it was Hindman. <laughs> I haven't written like 16 different so ways. I, I was going to mention that before because it's at least that many times in mine too. But uh, just to finish this up real quick, you get on your rocket boots, you get up to the ship, you get on board, you fuck off into space, the marker blows up, uh, you both narrowly escape, and then there's a little moment where Isaac looks to the passenger seat, just like he did at the end of Dead Space 1, mm-hmm. and instead of zombie Nicole, it's just Ellie, and she's like, what? It's like, what the fuck are you looking at, dude? And uh, Titan Station is completely destroyed. Then there was like an after credits sequence. Well, oh, I didn't see that. Just audio over the credits. Yeah, something. Uh, basically, the the important thing you gotta learn is the other sites are gonna have to pick up the slack. Uh, yeah, this was marker site twelve. Okay. That's it. That's the game. Whew! I did a lot of talking. So how about we move into our final thoughts? Let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna start with the man of science, the scientist man, Doctor <laughs> Scientist. I like scientist man. It's a good name. Scientist man, I've got three questions for you, and I got to say, I, I workshopped this a little Is bit. Any about uh, buffalo chicken dip? <laughs> oh, fucking buff dip. I'm making some. Anyway, oh, I got I some questions for you. For some right now. Do you want to play it now? Did the story work for thou? What score would you allow? I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> How long are we sitting on that? <laughs> you came up with it in the shitter today. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm working on it, right? We're, we're, tr- oh we're trying to. I wish you were here so I could smack you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the vow? Was that too much? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the first rhyming was bad. Oh, wow. What score would I allow? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I felt like starting with Do You Want to Play It Now was a good start, and then it just kind of fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fell apart right after the first five words. Uh, do I want to play it? I, I kind of always want to play a Dead Space game, but I don't want to pay for it. So if it's free, mm-hmm. it's for me. But yeah, I'd probably nice. play it. Did the story work for me? I don't know. It was kind of boring. It's almost shot for shot remake of the first game, being tricked and go to the crazy guy and you got to destroy a marker. Nothing exciting happens really. Mm-hmm. Except this time there's a hind the marker tied him and getting. Marker doesn't get that close to Convergence event in the first one. That doesn't make it better. <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought the first one was much better with, with the twist ending, but this one you kind of know Nicole's dead the whole time when she's like a dying angel from Supernatural the whole time with her face glowing. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good. Image now right? you know. Yeah, now I know what you mean. Perfect. All right, but I mean, I, I don't know. It's the story was kind of boring. Basically, a remake of the first game. Eh, I get gotta lose points for that. I'll give it. Uh, let's say a ten. He allows a ten. Yeah, I allow a ten. <laughs> that's the score you'll allow, huh? Yeah, that's. I don't know. It's if it was by itself, maybe, but it's lacking. It, it's, it follows the first one, so yeah. it's not. It's not as. I mean, it's a fun game, but. And the story's kind of blah. Fair. Okay. Tough okay, but well, fair. Well, uh, how about you, Sir Chompslap? I'll say the questions again because they're fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to play it now? Did the story work for thou? <laughs> what score would you allow? <laughs> I hate it even more now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I really want to punch him. 
I can't see you right now, Dr. Scientist, but I just see you so mad. It's seething. It's disgust more than anything. <laughs> well, do I want to play it now? Kinda. I mean, it's a fun. I'd never played this one. So, it's the same. Run around shooting fucking necromorphs. Just gotta shoot their limbs off. You know how it is. And it's a bunch of jump scares and cool looking environments and enemies. So, yeah, I'd play it. Yeah, boy. Did the story work for thou? Um, I... <laughs> I thought the story was lacking hardcore in this one. I mean, you just wake up and you're like, oh, another marker. I built. I have to f- fucking take care of it. Nobody else thought to destroy this thing. <laughs> okay. No, they're the unitologists. They need it. They have to have it. It's part of their religion. Yes. Yeah, but it's just, it's silly. And there's not really much story. It's just, well, we got to get to the marker and. Destroy it. Okay. Go here. Go here. Go here. Yeah, at the marker. Boom. I, I can't I can't argue with you on that. It's a <laughs> lot of, it, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. It's a lot of, especially if you're playing it, you don't notice it as much watching the movie, but as you're playing it, it's one of those games where we got to get to here. Well, this is wrong. Okay, we fixed this. Something else broke. Yeah, there's another hurdle, exactly. and we got to do this. Then there's another hurdle. Then finally you get to that area, and then you just have to do it again getting to another area. Yeah, I feel so, like they could have made the story more in-depth instead of just doing that. Just It seemed like it was artificially inflated story. Mm-hmm. So That's fair. I'll say it worked basically, but it was unnecessary. So... What score would I allow? I only set a nine. Damn. For the reasons I told thou. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. All right. All right, let's go to the man of the hour. Papa Scotch. The scotchiest. Uh, Does it make you want to play it? Is the story shit? And what score does it hit? <laughs> That's not what I don't. I don't hate what score does it hit. Maybe <laughs> in here. I don't hate that. Do you want to play it, it? What score does it hit? I couldn't think of shit. Was the first thing that came to my head. But. I, is the story total shit? We'll we'll work. We'll, we'll take it offline. Yeah, we'll, we'll work yeah, it out. We'll workshop it some more. <laughs> um. So the first time I watched this video, as I was getting ready for this, uh, my first initial gut reaction was to give it the highest score I've given any game so far, which would have been like twenty six. <laughs> I like where this is going. <laughs> All right. That was my first initial reaction. Uh, but then I realized, uh, I, I mean, I'm a Dead Space fanboy. I I love the series. I played the original when it came out. It was my first Platinum. There's a lot. I, I remember being so hyped yeah. for number two. I bought the special edition. Like, it was my jam. And then I thought about it more, and it really does work better as a playable game than a separate narrative. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the story. And uh I mean if we're if this was a gameplay podcast, this would be a whole different sto- like a whole different score. But you're right. There's a lot of like you said with the story starting stopping, uh shit getting in your way, getting past it. Uh and I think it works great with the gameplay, but the story isn't there isn't much different than we saw in the first game. I mean, there was a bigger budget in this game it was actually, I think, number 12 or number 11 on the list of most expensive video games ever. Holy shit. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's like number 11 or 12 on the list, but with gameplay development and mark, uh, marketing costs. Mm-hmm. So it, a lot of money went into it. I, I thought the game by itself st- is great, but the story, um, I love the idea of a horror game where the person you're playing as, you can't see what's going on. Like... You're not reliable. You're not a reliable narrator because you're losing your mind. And you keep seeing zombie Nicole who's not there. And who's to say that half of these monsters aren't there and you're shooting at the, an empty room somewhere. Oh, I like that. I love I, I love that idea. I love the setting on a vacuum in space where you have nowhere else to go. I love the idea that any dead person can be one of these. Uh they did hold this over from the first one, but I loved when you walk into a room and you just see bodies on the ground and you're like, which one of you motherfuckers is going to come alive? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that, that's a great bit. 
So you just start taking off limbs. I liked all the characters. I loved it. But you're right. Like there, it was familiar territory. Uh, it was nothing really new in a game that we saw in, as far as the story. Yeah, it blended a couple of unique elements together, but it's a lot of stuff we've seen before. Mm. And while I like the marker, I love the lore of this. I love how they created this huge video game movie comic book universe that I loved exploring and being in on it. Uh, Dead Space 2, it's it's an action movie, man. It's, it's not a mm-hmm. art-driven piece of material. So thinking about it more, getting that score to a normal level, <laughs> I went with a 15. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Which <laughs> I think that fairly shows my bias, but doesn't get completely crazy with it. Yeah, that's good. I like I liked the idea. <laughs> if the, what was her name? Strauss cool. and what's it? Oh, Ellie. Ellie. If they're just like, okay, come around now. And they're just looking at you and they're like, what's he doing? I don't know. He's shooting the fucking legs off of dead people on the ground. <laughs> like none of this was real. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And I, was Ellie, Dr. Scientist, was Ellie also the character in the Uncharted series that looked very similar to her? Like the same voice? Sort of. No, like there's a character. Yeah, from Uncharted 4. Yeah, she was also in. Uh, was she in is two? her name Ellie? I think so. She comes up in a couple of the Uncharted games, but I thought it was the same Ellie. I'm like, holy shit. She's 600 years old. Maybe she found a trinket that gave her everlasting life and she became a pilot. Could be. Probably not. But. <laughs> probably not. Um, That's our final score is a 34. Not yeah. Bad. Yeah. I, th- I think that's reasonable. Mm-hmm. I-, I thought. But when I was coming into this episode, I thought I'd be higher than a 15. I thought it was better than the first. But thinking about it and talking through the story, I, you're right. It wasn't better than the first. Yeah. I, I would have given it more points for, like, how fun it was to play and shit. But, you know, that's not what we do. Exactly. So, uh, any anybody have anything else they want to say about it? No, but it made me want really look forward to that new game that's coming out. Oh, uh, God damn it. I don't have the name of it in front of me. <laughs> got no idea myself. Oh, that is the the Callisto Protocol. Yeah. I'm going to be stoked for that. Uh, created by Glenn Schofield, who created Dead Space. Oh, man. 2022. Uh, do you even think we're going to be around that long? Oh, I okay. hope not. I probably won't make it, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, with that, Let's go ahead and move on to our favorite segment of every week, which is How Will Chump Slap Die? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it is Dr. Scientist's classic wrestling finisher of the week. Let's get ready to rumble. Ding, 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 He's out. Every week, we ask Dr. Scientist for a classic wrestling finisher, and he never disappoints us. So this week, Dr. Scientist, what do we got? All right, your wrestling lock of the week. Is uh, one of my personal favorite wrestlers, easily top five. Ric Flair. Nope. Oh. Not even in the top five. <laughs> Hollywood Hulk British Kobe? Bulldog. It's Shawn Michaels' finishing move. Ooh. Called the Sweet Chin Music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Sweet Chin Music. Are, are we going to do like the bit where we guess for Chump Slap's movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you might know. No, nah, because this one he just kicks you in the chin, doesn't Yep, he? that's straight up what it is. <laughs> it's just a kick to the chin. Do you have? Is that what the official? All right, all right. The official professional professional wrestling wiki describes it as a high side thrust kick attack, which sees the wrestler use the sole of the foot to strike an opponent's head or chin, usually preceded by a sidestep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I picture him doing it. Yeah, it's great. It's just a straight up kick to the chin. Classic. Classic. And you can watch videos of hundreds of them <laughs> on YouTube. And he he does it to every wrestler you can think of. He does it. To counter every finishing movie you could think of. There's literally one, I believe it was like the top 100 sweet chin musics of all time. (laughs) Uh, If I find that, I'll link it in the YouTube video. You can check it out. Uh, That is Shawn Michaels' sweet chin music. Yes, and this is the one that might actually work in a street fight. Yeah, because he'd pop it out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, it seems to work in wrestling a lot. (laughs) If it's 100% guaranteed to work in wrestling, what's that in real life? At least 30%? Yeah, something like that. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Uh, we are building up your repertoire of street fighting moves. <laughs> so if you're, I don't know, if you're one of those people that get out there and mix it up on the streets, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
let's go ahead and move on to our other favorite segment of every week, which is Chump Slaps Would You Rather. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> and I just realized I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I got one. I, I, I think. I'll make Do it you up. have one? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, well then, I'm not cutting it. What? Uh, every <laughs> week we ask Chump Slap a question, would you rather? He has to pick and guess which, I don't know, explain his answer of which one he'd rather do. Yep. So, Dr. Scientist, what's our question this week? All right. Would you rather be stuck on a deserted island with Papa Scotch? Ooh. Or some decent-looking chick that you have a chance at? That's not <laughs> what fair. What kind of question is that? A chick. <laughs> <laughs> but she's annoying. Does she laugh like Fran Drescher? Yes, we'll say that. <laughs> Where did you? All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I just came up with one. <laughs> just came up. With... This is off the top of the dome ski. Yeah. Well, I'll take the annoying chick. <laughs> <laughs> but she's not going to do any work around the island either. Oh, so she's lazy and annoying. Yeah, lazy and annoying. But you can have sex ha- with her. I have a chance. Yeah, yeah, you have or a chance. Is it almost a sure thing? Mm, we'll say 50 50. But you know, Papa Scotch will do like half the work. And, and he's a sure thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. Jeez. Maybe Papa Scotch is good at making crab or something. Yeah, I don't know. Us. I'll take Papa Scotch. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, bro. He can help me. Erect a fucking... Erect a lot of things. Oh. I was going to say build a barn. <laughs> How big is this island? Uh, do we have our own jerk-off corners? No. Oh, hey, what? Are we, we're we always in, like, ocular view of each other? No, you, you could hear it if you make a little bit of noise. I will, I'll fucking... We'll say, all right, we'll... I'll go swimming, right, well, no, we'll you s- can jerk we'll off. We'll say it's the size of the park <laughs> in town. That's a tiny island. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, well, I could jerk off on one side. <laughs> We got water crashing on on the beaches. It's going to drown it out. I'm not loud when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have our own corners to do our thing. All right. Sold. I'm in. Let's All right. It. Boom. I wish right. I was stranded on an island. With Papa Scotch. Or by hey. myself. I don't really care. <laughs> Papa Scotch or All Fran right. Drescher. <laughs> She's probably got some cool stories. Mm. Maybe not. Probably be annoying. Well, I mean, did you ever have something that really annoyed you? Then eventually you just got used to it, and that just became how life was. Yeah, I look Think at myself it. in the mirror every day, and I'm fucking annoyed. <laughs> is Papa Scotch in this scenario a robot of some sort or an android, or is it like no, literally it's you. me? I'm getting stuck going there with him. Yeah. All right. You're yeah. Stranded on the island with him. Well, that's obvious because I'd be like. I ain't doing this alone. You got to have stories, too. I got a couple. You, <laughs> these were both flying to Japan and crashed, and you're the only oh, two survivors. Oh, we didn't even make it to Japan. Nope. Can we at least say it was on the return yeah, flight so let's we go. saw all that weird Japan shit we could talk about? Yeah. You think that's going to save it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. That could be the end of it. That could be it. All right. That, we're done with this. All, all right, right. Next time, we'll definitely come more prepared. With the <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> that bad. Yeah. No, I mean, we did. We pontificated quite a bit about it. Yeah. And I guess that's what you want. But Chump Slap chose companionship and jerk off corners <laughs> <laughs> to a slightly annoying woman that he has a chance with. Um, let's say a lot of people out there disagreed with that choice and really doesn't care for Papa Scotch. <laughs> Where can they send that email to, Sir Chump Slap? Send it to plottytime at gmail.com and I'll. I'll gladly respond to you about why I don't like Papa Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> and let's say if someone out there, maybe it's Fran Drescher herself or just someone with a voice like Fran Drescher, would like to get to us on the socials and see if we have, uh, I don't know, if they could sway us in the other direction, where would they get to us on the socials, Dr. Scientist? At Plotty Time on Instagram and Twitter and Words with Friends. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, if you want to watch a brand new logo on the screen sort of <laughs> while you watch us pictures? on youtube we got a moving picture now it's just the one with the play time logo but something's moving get over to youtube <laughs> like and subscribe there it really helps us out so that does it for us uh get out there 
play some games, don't trust Dr. Scientist, and we'll talk to you later. Peace. See ya.